Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to a sales update. So I'm going to be doing like a sort of 10 sales in 10 minutes uh, video update for you. Um, a few sort of slightly higher value items, a few slightly lower value items, just random mix really again. And a few items that just I kind of like, you know, I enjoyed selling so I've thrown them in there as well. Um, but we'll start with this first item here. Um, which is the Dinky Toys um, 965 Turex uh, dump truck. Um, now this had, unusually, I don't know whether they were put on later or, or what, I, I don't know whether maybe this was the original release with the red hubcaps on, I'm not sure, but um, these had the red hubcaps on and all the other items that I saw on eBay completed and sold and eBay listed items didn't have red hubcaps, they had white hubcaps, so um, yeah, I don't know whether this was a rarer variant or whatever, but I thought, you know what, I'm just going to whack it on auction and see what it gets. Um, I think I whacked it on for about 4 99 start, 9 99 start, I didn't do 99p start, but um, I do 99p start for a few items and I risk it, but uh, you know, more often than not these days, because of past results, you know, past results where maybe some items have just gone for 99p, I've decided now it's more beneficial to me to put most things, unless I'm like 100% confident that it'll go up from 99p, uh, but most things on a, maybe 4 99 9.99, just to cover myself a little bit, so I've at least got a little bit of money in, in, the, in the bank really already from just that one starting bid. Um, but yeah, paid £65 plus commission for a large job lot of die cast and vintage action man stuff. And um, yeah, this will just go towards paying for that really. I've already sold other action man stuff, so to be honest, I'm probably in profit on this uh, job lot included, uh, including this sale. But yeah, I'm quite happy with that, 40 quid plus postage. Um, wanted to touch on this t Haynes manual. Uh, very, very long tail item you know very slow to sell 11 pound 11 pence in the 10 percent off sale if you don't know i'm running a 10 percent off sale uh for first i think well i started it on the 4th of jan and i think i ran it for two weeks so like virtually like first two weeks of jam that sort of area i'm running a 10 percent off sale and it's working really well it's keeping the sale steady from christmas and uh, along with listing some other uh, new stuff you know it's it's helping the activity of the store really um but yeah i just wanted to touch on this i mean i paid 199 i don't know what your thoughts are on haynes manuals whether they sell better in job lots or something like that but yeah it just was a bit of a slow one so i wanted to bring that one up and bring that to uh, people's attention maybe these are only worth getting certain ones of or maybe these are uh, just worth paying very very little for in future or you know as i say selling in job lots or something like that but it's worth you know doing a bit of research on how to sell these best um, and how to get more money out of them but yeah anyway still i was fairly happy just to clear that one and get some money out of it and reinvest uh, the profit from that into something better so yeah that was that one um this was the um al 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 aluminium if i can say that um photography flight case and i accepted an offer of 19 pound plus the 5.99 shipping on this um yeah it was had a lot of interest this um the only reason I accepted a fairly low offer, I paid £10 plus commission for this at the auction. However, inside of it was, I found a Royal Dalton Christmas plate, Christmas themed plate. And it turns out to be a £60 plate. So I've got that listed. So I was quite happy to accept a um, low offer on this of £19 plus the postage, get my money out of it, and then the plate and the other few bits of pottery and ceramics that were inside it, in the job lot will be my profit basically so you know i'm all about at the moment trying to get my uh, you know from these auction job lots try and get my initial cost back as soon as i can and then have things listed that virtually owe me nothing so i'm kind of building an inventory of things that are free to me you know we're, we're, we're free because they don't owe me anything um so that's the way i'm kind of doing it get your cost back price back as quickly as you possibly can whether that's through uh you know competitively priced by it nows or whether it's from uh auctioning off certain items and and then obviously the remainder of the stuff you can sit on for however long you want and build an inventory from um but you know hasn't really cost you anything so yeah that's my kind of my new strategy with that uh lovely item miss uh vintage jewel and sons uh boating summer striped hat 
straw hat, lovely. Um, as you can see, it's got a nice little, I don't know what you call this, to be honest, just like a little fabric insert there or something. Um, and, because uh, I, I want to call it a plaque, but it's not a plaque really, is it, because it's fabric. But uh, I don't know, if anyone knows what that is called inside a hat, then I'd really appreciate uh, the info. Um, but yeah, when you see these kind of things, you know, it says finest quality, it's made in England, all that lovely stuff in, in this little um, sort of fabric piece that's actually attached to the, to the inside of a hat. Usually that is an indication of quality, you know, other than like your standard like Matalan hats or M&S hats with your little tag in there. Um, but usually, you know, names to look out for are Lock and Co, um, Hatters of London, obviously. Um, who else? Oh God, who else now? I'm trying to think. Dun and Co are quite good. Um, Christie's are good. Um, and any one of those hats, like Lock and Co top hats and stuff can go for big money. Um, but you know, any one of those hats, whether it be a flat flat cap, trolby, you're going to be looking about fifteen pound minimum, really, because they retail for for quite a lot of money. Also, like Harris Tweed hats retail for quite a lot of money, so you're going to get decent money back for them on the secondary market. Although I haven't sold one myself, although I do own a Harris Tweed hat, and I know that they're not cheap. Um, so yeah, I mean, things like that, it's always worth looking out for. Um, but yeah, as you can see, about £17.09 plus my postage on this one. Cost me nothing. I'm completely in profit on that big hat job lot I uh, got for £25 plus commission from the auction house ages ago. And uh, yeah, just keep ticking over and the profit just keeps coming really. So yeah, um, and hats can be quite a fast seller, believe it or not, if you get the right ones. Uh, certain ones will take a while, this one took a few months, but if you get the right names and you get the right price point, they can go within a few days, honestly, really, really quick. So, yeah, uh, I really like selling hats. Um, uh, Tonka Mighty Diesel 3905 Cement Mixer, 5984, 10% sale, um, and plus my postage on that, obviously. Uh, paid £5 plus commission for this months ago in an auction. I've been sitting on it for a while, I was happy for it to go at that price uh, and still a fantastic profit and it makes me think on this item, when I sold it, it made me think why didn't I just reduce the price like, you know, two or three months ago to get it gone because there's still fantastic money in that so I don't know, I'm definitely going to have to look at pricing of certain uh, items you know, uh, maybe I'm pricing a little bit too high on certain items but I am kind of like that, I like to shoot for the moon a little bit. Something again I uh, shot quite high on is this Harry Potter and the Chamber, Chamber of Secrets hardback, uh, Ted Smart. Now this is the first edition, second print, you can tell that with the numbers down here. I believe on the first three books, the uh, Philosopher's Stone, Chamber of Secrets and Prisoner of Azkaban. Now I have seen it on the Goblet of Fire, I have seen this 10 to one sort of run of numbers at the bottom of this page like you can see on the photo there but specifically you know the first three books I do know the information for uh, is 100% correct if you see this 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 that is a first edition first print now in the later books like the you know uh, feet what's the order of the phoenix um, Half-Blood Twins and things like that, it'll just say first edition. Now that isn't really a true first edition, it's a, um, it's basically, they did a massive print one of the first editions in those later books, and there was so many of them out there, that it, they're virtually worthless, but if you can get these earlier books in this, you know, 10 to 1 run on this page, so it would say 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, instead of the 10 to 2 that this one is here, then you can get some really, really good money, especially if it is the Philosopher's Stone, uh, you know, specifically. Um, but yeah, this was a first edition second print, so not as desirable to collectors as the first edition first print, but still, I got 28 quid plus my postage for this, and I think I got this for like 50p or a quid in a charity shop. Very, very good piece of advice, that is, look out for those numbers in these Harry Potter books. I know that newer people to reselling might not know this, I know all of you are older, you know, well not older guys, but, you know, old hands at reselling will know this information anyway, but uh, the newer people might, um, might not, so it's always good for me to reiterate that information. So, anyway, on with the sales update, uh, low vats, Langley wear, deep blue, uh, glazed studio pottery vase, with Studio Pottery now, I feel quite comfortable, not necessarily with the higher end pieces, I'm talking like, 
you know, anything above like 60, 70 quid, I'm not really, di uh, you know, dip my feet in, you know, not really got my feet wet in that higher end of studio pottery yet. But certainly those kind of bread and butter style pieces, you know, that maybe 10 to 40 or 50 pound range. I mean, you could say that's slightly higher value, 40 or 50 quid. But that sort of range, I feel quite comfortable in. I'm really starting to love um, listing them, looking at the marks, researching them, researching what the marks mean, researching what the different types of marks are, what the different types of glazing is and things like that. It's really, really interesting. Now this isn't a great piece at all really in terms of, you know, compared with other pieces. For me personally, I like um, pieces just because they look nice. I don't really care. Some people will really think, oh, that's a really lovely piece because it's got a, a really good name. I'm not like that. I just like the piece for what it is, for the look of the piece. I don't even care if it doesn't have a, a brand or a potter or whatever on the piece. I I just like the piece for what it is and this was one of those pieces. You know, okay, it's not got the best name, it's not got a really desirable name or really even a very well-known name or anything like that, but it was a nice piece. Um, and, you know, for me personally, I think this should have been worth a bit more, but, you know, you can only get what the market, what the market wants really, what the market is prepared to pay. So, yeah, 1349 in my 10% sale plus four quid postage. Bread and butter standard piece, but I'm still happy with that. Came in a studio pottery job lot from the auction. And um, yeah, that'll just go towards paying for that really. So lovely piece. And also, as you can see, I've embarrassed myself here with the raw mail size guide using that as my uh, size indicator. But I did want to touch on this actually. I would normally use my tape measure. My tape measure got lost at that specific moment. I found it now, it's here. I don't know whether you can see that on the uh, video but yeah i found it now but i had to use temporarily my rather worn royal mail size guide and that royal mail size guide is probably a testament to how long i've been reselling now uh with the wear consistent with age on it but um yeah um what i wanted to say what i wanted to touch on is with these studio pottery pieces and any sort of you know antique piece like this what a lot of people ask is what's the height or what's this or what's that you know what size is it and stuff so i always throw a, um, an indicator of size you know a tape measure or anything like that into one of the photos so that then you you know you don't get as many messages about size or height or whatever and then it means that you know you work, you're working smart you're you're eliminating that need to answer messages in the future so it, it's always good to do it's a nice little tip that one um next is the uh the sooty show happy birthday sooty brand new and sealed always worth looking out for sooty dvds brand new or used although used you're probably going to get about the best part of a tenner for you know certain ones other ones you might might not even be worth picking up used so you've got to look into them a bit more if you want to buy used but a lot of the sooty dvds brand new and sealed you're going to get some decent money for you can even get like sooty vhs and things like that you can get insane money for some of them um i think i'm pretty sure i've seen people get like 50 quid 40 50 quid for certain like sooty vhs's and stuff um but yeah for this one brand new and sealed uh 10 off sale here uh, £17.95, paid £1.99 in a charity shop. It'll go as a large letter, obviously, being a DVD. So, yeah, really nice profit on that one. So, quite happy with that. Um, vintage West German Ceramics Fat Lava, um, orange, green striped va uh, vase. I always want to say vase, I don't know why, but a vase. Um, I'm not American, but I always want to say vase. I, I just like the sound of it. Um, yeah, so um, I had this on for a while. And I had it on at about 25 quid, 20, 25 quid, because that's what I believe it's worth. I would want, you know, you know, I would be willing to pay 25 quid for a piece like this. Doesn't matter who else is, I would be willing to pay that. So I put it on at that money. And then I took it off and I put it down in my cabinet and I reduced the price according to what I believe the, you know, buyers in the cabinet would want to pay. And I think I reduced it to about 15 or 20 pound. And obviously that's postage is irrelevant on that it's not applicable um but it just didn't go in my cabinet it didn't go on ebay and i thought to myself well i'll take it out of my cabinet and i'll put it back on ebay but this time i'm gonna have to be harsh and i'm gonna have to think to myself like what is what are people gonna actually pay for this and i thought to myself right put it on at 15 quid plus my postage someone is gonna pay that 
Um, and although I think it should be worth maybe 20 or 25 or maybe even a little bit more in my opinion because I, I but the thing is my heart gets into these items a little bit and uh, you want to price them higher because you you like the piece um, but I do think that we, these kind of standard more standard pieces of fat lava 15 quid plus your postage about that standard range you might be lucky to get 20 quid or something like that but certainly this one went after a couple of weeks at that lower price on ebay so i think i got the pricing more on point with this but um you know i would have liked a little bit more but i did try for it and i just could not get it so yeah but it was a lovely piece i mean better pieces of fat lava i'm meaning like really really good piece and you i mean if you are into fat lava you'll know what a really good piece is and this doesn't come close to it but um you know a really good piece you can get good money and you'll be able to get it pretty quickly if it you know if it's something desirable but for these like sort of uh bread and butter pieces you just unfortunately people aren't prepared to pay even that slightly higher value range which i would like to achieve or which i feel the item is uh, is a fair value or you know i feel that the item is of that value anyway i'll stop rambling about fat lava you can see how passionate i am about it but um this was the mistake i thought i made from the auction my, my previous auction haul i uh, bought this for 10 pound plus commission for about 13 quid i think and um Basically, I thought, oh man, I've made a really bad mistake here. It's completely come away at the back, that uh, piece at the back. It's a walnut canteen. It's completely come away. You can see we've tried to repair it with tape there, which is just ridiculous. I don't know why you'd try and repair it with tape, something like this. But um, yeah, um, it's completely come away. But it was really nice. And I saw on Complete and Sold, it was by Oliver and Bauer, uh, silver plate makers. And... Um, I saw on Complete and Sold, things look similar ones of this by the same makers had gone for good money, you know, like, well, I'd say close to £100, maybe just shy of £100, like £69.99, that sort of area, £59.99. Some were a little bit bigger than mine, some were a bit smaller, and there's different prices and stuff, but um, I thought to myself, well, I've got to account for that uh, really, really bad wear, you know, it's going to need to be restored or something this, so... I put it on at 39.99 plus my postage, thinking, you know, it'll probably go, it might take a while, but it'll probably go, and it went within a day, so obviously I undersold this, um, maybe I could have got 50, maybe I could have got 60, um, but still I was so happy to get the knowledge on this item, and to expand my knowledge on these sorts of items, because I've not really had cutlery canteens much before, um, so I was really happy for that, and, um, also, I learned that uh, this here, obviously this is probably easy knowledge to a lot of people, but these handles here are made of ivory. Now, ivory is like a, um, a false bone, you know, it's like a substitute to ivory and stuff like that. But it was really interesting just looking at them, researching the makers, researching what these were made of and things like that. Obviously, you can see the, the little B there for Bauer. Um, on the on the cutlery handles, it was just really nice. It, it was two layers deep. They had twenty four pieces, and um, yeah, I was I, I got my money out of them. I made some decent profit. You know, not the best profit, but some decent profit. And certainly in future, it's made me aware of um, pricing on these items. And if I do get a really good condition one, maybe it's a different makers or whatever. But if I do get a really good condition one, I'm going to be going high on things like this. And certainly I'll be looking out for them a lot more in the auction. Because I feel like um, it's quite a comfort zone for me. Even though, I've, as I say, I've not dealt with canteen, you know, cutlery canteens a lot. I feel very comfortable in the niche. I just feel like like it's for me. You know, it's, it's just a nice niche that I belong in and that I can function quite well in. So... Uh, unlike things like clothing for me, I'm just I, no matter how much I try, it's just not for me clothing. But um, things like this, it's like boom, you just fit, you know, you just fit. Um, so yeah, really nice sale. But as I say, I probably could have got more. Anyway, we're probably probably coming up to like 20 minutes now, probably even more. So um, I'll leave it there, guys. And I hope you enjoyed the sales. If you did, please do leave a comment or a like down below and I will see you in my next video. I was trying to make this like a 10 minute video and, and yeah, I just can't because I, I, the thing is I love what I'm talking about so much that I ramble, you know, and it, it's terrible. But anyway, I'll leave it there guys. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you very soon. Bye for now guys.